Hey everybody, welcome to yoga. My name is Jane, one of the librarians at Lone Star College Sci Fair, teaching yoga from my living room once again. Welcome and thank you for joining me this evening. So I wanna dedicate this practice tonight to two people. One to my mom, Pat, she celebrated a birthday on Monday. Happy birthday, mom, love you. And the other is to my best friend, Azelle, celebrating her birthday tomorrow. Happy birthday, love you both. All right. So remember that for news of all upcoming yoga classes, you can follow us on social media. You can also head to cyflib.info slash yoga. That is our events page for yoga. And that's where you're going to find uh, the link to whatever live stream is currently um, about to start, um, as well as all the archived classes I've posted. So please feel free to follow me there. You can also grab my YouTube, my uh, email there if you would like to be added to our yoga list. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. And one thing that I want to let you know about tonight is that I'm working with a little bit of an injury. I, I did something weird to a hip muscle over the weekend. So you're probably going to notice that maybe in some poses, I'm, I'm not necessarily going in as deeply as I usually do. And this is a really great reminder that if you're ever working with an injury, um, or something else isn't just quite feeling right, remember that we always work with the body that we have, right? So when you practice, don't think about the body you wish you had and what that could do or what somebody else's body can do. Practice with the body that you have on the yoga mat this evening and some playful kitties behind me. Okay. So like most of my classes, we're going to start out in a brief sit before we head into our movement. And then we are going to end class this evening again with a brief meditation. Um, or if you prefer, <laughs> you can lie back in your traditional rest pose in Shavasana. So let's go ahead and get started with a brief sit. You uh, can take your sit a few different ways. If you want to roll up the back of your mat and sit on your roll, go for it. If you have a meditation cushion, a sakhu, like I do, feel free to break that out. For me, kneeling on my cushion is, is one of the most comfortable ways to, to sit for a little while. So just take a second and come into a sit that feels good for your body this evening. We'll be here for a few minutes. And when you get here, take a moment to sit tall. So pull the waist out of the hips. Pull the rib cage out of the waist, and the gaze is straight ahead. Eyes are soft, shoulders are loose, and the belly is full and easy. And I'd like you to first bring your attention to the sounds that you hear outside of the room you're in. So maybe you can hear noise from the street or from the rest of your house. Just take a moment to turn your attention to sounds that you hear outside this room. And as you hear them, note them, observe them, and move on. Now I'd like you to bring your attention to sounds that you can hear inside the room that you're in. Maybe that's your air conditioning or your cats. Taking a moment to observe the sounds that you hear inside the room you're in. And once again, observe it and let them pass without dwelling on it. And now I'd like to, you to turn your attention 
to your own self. So start by bringing your attention to your mind. What are the thoughts like? Is your mind racing? Are you thinking about things that happened earlier today? Things that will happen after this practice? Are you feeling pretty calm and serene in your thoughts right now? Just take a moment, observe the quality of your thoughts, the tone of the thoughts. Observe and let them go without blame, without judgment. And then turn your attention to your body. Feel the parts of your body that are touching the earth this evening, the points of your body that are connecting with the earth underneath you. Take a moment to observe which parts of your body might feel strong and steady tonight. Take a moment to observe parts of your body that might feel a little tender or a little tight tonight. Maybe parts of the body you want to be aware of as we practice this evening. And then finally, turn your attention to your breath. Without trying to control the breath in any way, just note the quality of that breath. Is it smooth? Is it steady? And then just for our final moment here, I want you to see if you can mentally zoom out and take a macro view of your entire self, your thoughts, your body, your breath. Observe how all three are working together. Focusing the mind, on the breath. Letting the joining of body and breath help compromise. And then taking all that in Bring the hands, palms touching in front of the heart center. Bow your head. Drop your hands. And then gently blink the eyes open. And come back center. Nice. All right. We're actually going to start our physical practice tonight on our belly. So go ahead and move your cushion out of the way. Keep it handy for the end of class. And go ahead and drop down all the way onto your belly. And when you get there, just make a pillow for your hands, turn your head one way. And all you need to do right now is just sort of waggle the hips back and forth. Okay, we're going to shake out that sit. Gentle motion of the hips back and forth. And then turn the head in the other direction. Let the other cheek rest on your hand. Bend the knees. And then go ahead and start windshield wipering. The legs and hips back and forth. And if that doesn't feel good in your body for whatever reason, you can bring the legs back down and just keep with that hip waggle. And eventually bringing the legs to stillness, bringing the palms flat on the mat, then pushing all the way back into a child's pose position. 
So big toes are touching. Knees can be wide or they can be together, whatever feels best for your hips. And hands are straight out, fingertips spread. Forehead reaching towards the mat and resting on the mat if you have that flexibility. And for a moment, pick the head up, look forward at your hands, and tense the fingertips. Really let the chest drop so you feel like a little gentle traction in your shoulders, like a little stretch for your shoulder blades. And then bringing the palms flat again, shift the hips to the left a little tiny amount, and walk the hands to the right, any amount. And they don't even have to come off your mat. Left hand can rest on top of the right hand, and then drop your head. You should be feeling a nice side stretch from the top of the left hip all the way through the, the right shoulder. And when you're ready, bring the hands back center, bring the hips back center, and shift the hips to the right just a little bit. Walk the hands to the left. Maybe the right hand rests on top of the left hand. Drop the head. Walk the hands back center, recenter the hips. We're going to take a little thread the needle, and we've done that before, but we've done it from tabletop, but we're going to take it from child's pose. What I'd like you to do is turn your right palm up and then sneak it under that left arm so that the right shoulder and the right cheek come down to the mat. If you want, you can walk this left arm back again, you can even tent the fingertips and bend the elbows. When you're ready, bring that right arm back to center, and we'll take the other side. So left palm up, sneak it between the spot in front of the right knee, and then bring left cheek, left shoulder down. Maybe the shoulder won't reach the mat, that's fine. And then bring it back. Now, go ahead and take a look up at me for a second. We're going to take a little low uh, flow here. Um, so I want to let you know what it looks like first. So just watch me for this first one, and then we'll do a few all together. So we're going to start in child's pose. And then on our inhale, we're going to push up to a tabletop. And it doesn't have to be a super like squared up tabletop because then on our exhale, we're going to bring everything down to the mat. We're coming onto our belly. We're going to reposition our hands underneath our shoulders. And on our inhale, we're going to take a teeny little low cobra. And then on the exhale, we're going to push back to our child. So that's what our little low flow is. We're going to do that a few times. I just want to reposition myself right at the very back of the mat. So if you want to take a second to do that, go for it. And then meet me in child's pose. Exhale everything. And on your inhale, rise to a tabletop, hands and knees position. On your exhale, lower the thighs, the hips, the belly, the chest down to the mat. Tops of the feet are on the mat. Bring the hands underneath the shoulders. Hug the elbows in. And tiny little cobra. Peel the chest off the mat. Just a tiny amount. Exhale. Push all the way back. Child's pose. Okay. Let's take a couple more of those. And hands can move, right? Hands don't have to be fixed into the same position. Um, when you're ready, inhale to tabletop. Exhale. Lower down to the belly. Inhale, tiny cobra. Exhale, push it all the way down. 
Okay, last one. Inhale forward. The blinking breath with movement. Exhale, roll down. Inhale, elbows hug in, chest is broad, tiny cobra. Exhale, push all the way back. Child's pose. Okay. Come on up to hands and knees. And this time we are going to make sure our tabletop is square. So make sure the fingers are spread wide. Wrists are directly underneath the shoulders, knees underneath the hips. And we'll come into some cat cow. So on your inhale, drop the belly, look forward, or look up rather. Exhale, round the back, tuck the chin. For more rounds. Inhale, cat, drop the belly, let the collarbone be wide. Exhale, round, 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 tuck the navel to the spine. Inhale, cat. Exhale, cat. Inhale, cat. Exhale, cat. Perfect timing, all of them. Let's take one more. Inhale, cat. Exhale, cat. And then just bring it back to a neutral spot. Right. Okay. We're going to do a little calf stretch. So come off the back of one knee. Uh, plant the toes and really uh, stretch back into that heel, stretching that calf. Doesn't matter which side you chose first. And then set that knee back down. And we'll take the other side. Come off the back knee. Stretch the heel back, stretching into that back calf. Come back forward to tabletop. We were just on our wrists a little bit, so let's stretch those out. So you can either flip the hands so that the fingertips are facing back towards you and gently bring your hips back so you're stretching the wrist. Or if you're looking at me like that's not going to happen, Jane, I want you to sit back on your heels and stretch our wrist the way we did the last time. So send the right hand out and gently pull the fingertips back with the other hand. If you're doing it this way, switch sides, left hand out, jab, equal fingertips back. If you're still on hands and knees, go ahead and start to move the fingertips to face back forward. It was here. And I really like to do this by uh, rolling up the front of my neck because then that gives me a nice little cushy roll to put my knees on. So take a second, roll up the front of your mat if you want a little extra uh, cushion for your knees. When you get there, stand your knees on the roll and bring your right foot and leg out to the side. So right toes are going to point forward. So this right leg is out at a 45 degree angle to your body. Right palm rests up on the right thigh. Inhale the left arm up. Take a second, make sure the shoulder is away from the ear. And then exhale and stretch over to the right. Your gaze can be up underneath that left arm or straight ahead if that doesn't feel great for your neck. Gate pose. On your next inhale, inhale, come up, and we'll take the other side. Go on your knees, left, left foot out, toes point forward. Left palm faces up, inhale the right arm up, and exhale side, stretch over to the left. And for me, I'm not going to go as far on this side. This is getting into that, that hip that's not feeling great for me today. So again, modify as you need to, right? Listen to your body and don't push it. And on your next inhale, Inhale, come on up. Replace your knees. Unroll the mat. And come into your tabletop position one last time. Make sure that hands are shoulder distance apart. And then walk the hands forward just like one half hand length, not too far. 
tuck the toes and then let the knees and the hips up and back to downward facing dog. So pressing down and forward with the hand. Take a second, come up onto both tiptoes, and then send the hips to the back of the room and really drive the heels down towards the mat. If you want, you can bend one knee at a time, getting an additional cat stretch. Moving back and forth, walking your dog out. And then two straight legs. Take a deep, slow inhale. And on your exhale, really bend the knees and slowly walk your feet to your hands. When you get there, bring your hands to the shins, flatten the back, lift halfway. And then exhale and bending the knees as much as you need to here, grab onto your big toes with your peace sign finger. And if that's not happening, no matter how much the knees are bent, you can just leave hands right on the chin. That's okay. Once more, try and flatten the back, lift halfway. And then exhale, fold in, bending the elbows out to the side. Breathing here. With each inhale, you can think about extending the spine. With each exhale, you can think about pulling the chest to the thighs, maybe a little bit more. Inhale here. And exhale, gently release your toes. And taking your time, start to roll up one vertebrae at a time. Not rushing at all. Knees can stay bent. Head stays tucked. And when you get to the top, roll the shoulders back. Okay. So let's start our standing series. Uh, I love starting off with some half sun, breath with movement. So go ahead and come into a mountain pose at the top of your mat. Feet are flat on the earth. You might even lift your toes for a second just to check and make sure that the four corners of your feet are firmly planted in the mat. Feet can be together, or I'm having my feet about hip width apart again just to accommodate my hips today. So modify as needed. Leg muscles are engaged, tailbone slightly tucked, hands resting at your sides, shoulder blades melting down the back, gaze straight ahead. Exhale everything, and inhale, arms rise. Exhale, bend the knees, fold forward. Inhale, hands to the shins, lift halfway. Exhale, leave home. And inhale, one movement to rise, arms lift. Exhale, return the hands to your side. Let's take a couple more rounds of half salutations. Inhale, arms rise. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, hands to the shins, lift halfway, flat them. Exhale, fold. Inhale, press the feet into the earth to help you rise. Exhale, hands return. And one more. Inhale, arms rise. Exhale, fold forward. Knees can always be bent on the fold forward. Inhale, hands to the shins, flat back. Exhale, we fold. And then inhale, rise. Hands root, arms reach. Exhale, return. All right, let's set up for some warrior one. So go ahead and keep or reset your mountain pose if you need to at the top of the mat. 
And just for a second, bring the hands to the hips. And what I'd like you to do is leave the right foot where it is. Left foot takes a big step back. When you get there, plant the left heel. So left heel is on the mat. And take a look down at your back toes. They should be pointing out maybe at about 45 degree angle. So maybe if they were on a clock, they'd be pointing towards like 10 or 11 o'clock. Now take a look at your front leg. We want to make sure that this front shin is vertical. The front knee is pointing straight out over the toes, and we should still be able to see our front toes like that. So if you need to take a second to readjust your stance, maybe make it a little bit longer, maybe uh, walk the right foot out to the right a little bit, take a second to make this look good in your hips before we get the upper part of the body. Now, let's take a look at the hips. Bring your hands to your hips and just feel which direction your hip points are pointing in. Mine are pointing towards the top left corner of my mat. So what I gently want to do is gently pull the right hip back and move the right hip forward so that my hips are a little bit more square now to the front of my mat. Beautiful. Good. Bringing the weight into the back heel to help us stay stable here. Redropping into that front knee, making sure that front chin is still vertical. And again, having that same um, feeling like there's a scale underneath each foot and we want it to weigh the same. So put a little bit more charge and weight into the back heel if you feel like you're dumping into that front leg. All right. So now that we have our bottom half, let's take our top half. Take a second and just like in our sit, let's be tall. So pull the waist out of the hips. Pull the rib cage out of the waist. And gaze is straight ahead. Now you can leave the hands on the hips here. Or you can bring them uh, palms touching in front of your heart. Or for the full expression of this pose, you can lift the arms to either side of your ears. And just make sure that the shoulders are away from your ears and you're not clenching up. And for a little bit more, if you want to turn this into a balanced pose, you can look up and bring your palms to touch, looking up at your thumb as the palms press into each other. Warrior one. Few breaths here. Inhale. Exhale, release the hands to your hips if they weren't already there. And then just step forward to the top of the mat. Let's take a half style to uh, shake it out before we get to the next side. So mountain pose, top of the mat. Exhale everything. Inhale, arms rise. Exhale, bend the knees and fold. Inhale, hands to the shins, lift halfway. Exhale, refold. And then inhale, plant the feet to help you rise. Exhale, hands return. Hands to the hips. We're going to take the other side for warrior one. So go ahead and take a big step back with the right foot. Left foot stays where it is. Make sure that right heel is down on the mat and those right toes are pointing out to one, two o'clock on the clock. Take a second, bring one hand to the inside of the left knee and just use that to help you make sure that this front shin is vertical and that that front knee is pointing directly over the front toe. Good deal. Once more, put some weight into that back foot if you feel like you're unbalanced, and bring that hands to the hip, and gently square them up. So maybe pulling the left hip back and bringing the right hip forward so you feel like your hips are square towards the front of the mat. Nice. Now that we have that, go ahead and lengthen the torso. Let the collarbone and the chest be wide and choose your arm position. Hands on the hip, hands in prayer, hands to either side of your ears, or bring the palms, woo, bring the palms together and look up at your thumbs. And you can see that that's uh, more of a balance challenge when we're taking this expression of the pose.
deep inhale. And on your exhale, release the hands back to the hips and step on up to the top of the mat. Nice. Okay. So we're going to turn that warrior one pose. We're going to incorporate it into our flow, adding on with some poses that we did a couple of weeks ago. So come to the top of your mat. Take your mountain pose. Hands rest by the sides. Take a moment. Roll the shoulders back. Right. And once again, exhale everything. Inhale, arms rise. Exhale, bend the knees and inhale, hands to the shins, lift halfway, flat back. Exhale, fold in, big step back with the left foot, left heel pivots towards the mat, and we come right up into our warrior one pose. So one thing I like to do here, um, again, to help you square the hips, go ahead and dip that left arm back behind you. And as it comes through, use that momentum to help square your hips. Two breaths. Proud, wide, broad warrior chest. Inhale here. Exhale, bring the hands to the hips and look down at your back foot. I want you to adjust this back foot so now those back toes are pointing towards the long side of your mat. They're pointing to nine o'clock on the clock now. If you want, you can leave the front foot here or walk it in just a little bit so that that front heel aligns with the back arch. We're going to warrior two here. So once we have that front shin vertical, Arms out straight, parallel with the ground, gazing over those right middle fingertips. Warrior two. On your next inhale, straighten that front leg. Maybe walk the back foot in just a Step. And then reach, reach, reach for the front of your mat. Kick your back hips to the back. When you can't reach any further, bring that right hip down wherever it wants to land this evening. Maybe it's the floor, the foot, the shin. And left arm reaches towards the ceiling. Wherever your right hand is, make sure it can press down firmly enough so that it's your leg or the mat or a block so that you feel a rebound that opens up your chest to the left a little bit more. Few breaths here. If that's feeling like a little much, I think I stretched a little too far into that, you can always back out a little bit, right? I'm gonna bring my hand a little bit further up my leg and bend my elbow a little bit. It's a nice modification. Inhale where you are. Exhale, look down at your front leg and gently bend into that front knee. Come off the back heel and bring hands down to either side of that front foot. So we're here in a lunge for just a moment. Inhale where you are. And then exhale, try and straighten into that front leg and send the hips back. That back heel is not going to, it may touch on the mat. It, Probably won't, that's okay. So we're taking a wide-legged form of pyramid here. So just for a moment, inhale, flatten the back, and then exhale, re-bend. So that head is coming down towards your right thigh or right knee. This is a really lovely pose. If you uh, practice with blocks, this is a nice pose to have blocks handy for. You can really help bring the floor to you with those blocks. So always feel free to modify with props whenever you like. Inhale here. And then exhale, gently, gently rebend into this front leg. So we're here in our lunge position. 
we're heading uh, back for um, a little vinyasa. So you can either plant the hands and step this front foot right back to meet the back one and lower down. Or you can bring the back knee to the mat and bring the front knee to meet it. And then everybody go ahead and roll down onto your belly. When you get there, put the toes so the tops of the feet are on the mat, hands underneath the shoulders, elbows hug in, press the hands and feet into the earth to help you rise into cobra. Inhale here. Exhale, lower down and press all the way back into downward facing dog. And if you want to come to tabletop and then tuck the toes and lift the knees and hips, go for it that way. Just a breath or two in down dog. And we're going to come out of the salutation the same way that we came in. So take a deep breath. And on your exhale, step the left foot forward between your hands. We're back in that lunge, just the other side. Inhale where you are. And exhale, step the right foot forward to meet the left one. Inhale, hands to the shins, lift halfway, flat back. Exhale, refold. And then inhale, press the feet into the earth to rise. Exhale, hands to turn. Nice. Take the other side. Reset your mountain pose. Exhale, everything. And then inhale, arms rise. Exhale, bend the knees and fold forward. Inhale, hands flat, flat back. Exhale, refold, and this time right foot takes a big step back. Right heel pivots down, rise all the way straight into warrior one. Make sure front shin is vertical. Right heel has equal weight. And then to make sure hips are square, drop that right arm behind you. And as it comes back through, use that momentum to help square the hips. Nice. Warrior one. Inhale. And on your exhale, hands to the hips and readjust this back foot so that the toes are pointing straight out to the right side of your mat. You can walk this front foot in a little bit if you need to. And then reset your arms straight out, parallel with the earth. Gaze over those left middle fingertips. Warrior two. On your next inhale, straighten the front leg. Maybe walk the back foot in a little bit. And then reach, reach, reach with your hands as hips kick to the back. And then bring the left hand down wherever it wants to rest this evening. Right arm straight up to the side. Triangle pose, letting the right side of the chest open much as possible. Inhale where you are. Exhale, gently bend into the front knee. Come off the back heel, hands down to either side of that front foot. We're in a lunge for a moment. Inhale where you are. And then exhale, straighten into that front leg, move the hips back. Take a moment, inhale, come up just a little bit, flatten the back. I'm going to grab my blocks here. 
And then exhale, three, four. Wide-legged pyramid. Now, this front leg isn't super, super straight, right? You don't want the knee locked. So make sure you have a little bit of a, a bend in that front knee. Inhale where you are. And then exhale, gently bend into that front knee again. Either step the front foot straight back to the back one or come onto the back knee and bring the front knee back to meet it. Whenever you get there, lower down onto your belly. Hands underneath the shoulders, elbows hug in, press the tops of the feet into the earth, peel the chest off the mat, broad chested cobra. And then exhale, release, and push back to downward facing dog. Either coming onto the knees first or just pushing straight back, your choice. Breath or two here and down dog. And then coming out the way we came in, inhale where you are. And on your exhale, step the right foot forward between the hands. Take a breath in the lunge. Exhale, step the left foot forward to meet the right. When you get there, inhale, hands to the shins, lift half foot. Exhale, refold. And then inhale, press the feet into the earth to help you rise. Exhale, hands return. Okay, so we're going to bring it uh, down to the mat for some of our uh, last poses. But before we do that, let's take one last standing pose. Let's take a wide legged forward bend. So face the uh, one side of your mat, doesn't matter which one, and take a big step out. We want to make sure that our toes and heels are in line with each other. And take a stance. Usually the general rule of thumb is that when you hold your arms out straight, the ankles are underneath your fingertips or your wrists. Um, but if you need to shorten your long, make your stance a little longer, go for it. So hands to the hips. Inhale where you are. And then exhale, fold forward. Hands can stay on hips or come down to the mat. When you get there, take a second. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, refold. Your next inhale. Inhale, lift halfway, flat back. Then exhale, use your core to come all the way up to standing. Then once more, step forward to the front of your mat. All right, let's bring it down to the mat. Inhale, lift your arms. Exhale, sit back like there's an imaginary chair behind you, bending your knees. And then keep lowering and lowering and lowering and lowering, lowering, lowering until you get all the way down onto your mat. When you get there, go ahead and lie all the way back on your mat. We're going to do just a tiny little bit of core work before we get into the next stretching section. So come on down to your back and bend your knees with your feet off the floor so that your knees are directly over your hips and your ankles are straight out from your knees. So like if I were looking at you from the side, it would look like you were sitting very straight in a chair, right? So hands are going to rest at the side. We're going to inhale where we are. And on our exhale, we're going to lift the head, neck, and maybe some of the shoulders off the mat and reach the arms. And maybe pull, pulling the lower belly down to activate the core. We're going to inhale here. And then we're going to exhale and release it back to the mat. Okay, let's do a few more of those. So inhale where you are. Exhale. Lift the head, neck, shoulders, reach, pull the lower belly down, stay here for the inhale. And then exhale, 
float. Two more. Inhale where you are. Exhale. Lift it up. Reach. Exhale back down. One more. Inhale back flat. Exhale. Pull it up. Reach. And I want you to really use your belly to help lift you up here, right? Don't let your head and neck and shoulders take all this strain. Inhale where you are. And then exhale. Lower everything back down to the mat. Okay, we're going to take a bridge pose. So knees are bent, feet are flat on the mats. And a good rule of thumb is to have the heels close enough into your body that you can kind of just brush the back of the heels with your fingertips when your arms are on either side. So inhale where you are. And then exhale, tilt the pelvis back so the lower back imprints on the mat. And then push into the feet, push into the backs of the shoulders to lift the hips. Now, you can stay right here, but if you have a little bit more room, you can snuggle the shoulder blades underneath you and clasp your hands underneath your knees. So feet pressing into the earth are helping the hips lift. The upper back and the tops of the shoulders pressing into the earth are helping the chest lift. And if you can, try and relax the glutes. We tend to get our bridges up really high by like super squeezing the glutes, but try and let your, your feet and your shoulders uh, press you up there and letting the glutes relax. Good, one more breath here. If your hands were clasped underneath you, unclasp and slowly roll back down to the mat one vertebrae at a time. When you get there, just hang out for a second. Let the spine come to rest for a breath or two. Now the next thing that we're gonna take is a reclined pigeon. And if you prefer to take a traditional pigeon, go ahead and flip over to hands and knees and take your traditional pigeon. If you want to stay on your back for reclined pigeon though, go ahead and uh, lift your feet off the floor, cross the right ankle on top of the left thigh. Left foot can just be hanging out, uh, doesn't need to do anything. Right foot, I want you to really flex so that the toes point back towards the right knee. That's gonna protect our knee joint. Bring our hands through to clasp behind the left thigh. Inhale where you are. And exhale, pull the whole setup towards your chest a little bit. Now, if that's a little bit too much, your left foot can just stay on the mat, right? You don't have to do the whole class with full action. We're going to be here for a few breaths. So if you're taking a traditional pigeon, know that you have a few breaths to sort of settle into this dog. You're feeling this stretch on the outside of the right hip and right glute. Okay, if you're in your traditional pigeon, Go ahead and gently start to come out of that side. We're going to switch sides here in a moment. If you're on your back like me, unclasp your hands, uncross the leg, and just for a second, hug both knees into the chest. If you're taking a traditional pigeon, go ahead and switch sides and take your other side. If you're on your back like me, let's switch. So cross ankle on top of the right thigh. Right foot can just hang out, but do make sure left foot is flexed so that your toes flex back towards the knee. And then clasp the hands behind the right thigh. Inhale where you are. And exhale, gently pull 
Ooh, I notice if you have a side difference, again, this is my more tender side, so I'm not gonna pull in quite as strongly and modify as needed. Be here for a few more deep and slow breath cycles. Here in a traditional pigeon, go ahead and gently start to come out of that side. And if you took a traditional pigeon, I would like you to just for a breath or two, push back into a downward facing dog. If you're on your back like me, stay on your back like me. Gently release that left ankle and hug both knees into the chest. Folks who are in traditional pigeon, after you take your down dog, bring your knees down to the mat, and then make your way onto your back. And all of us will join onto our back. When you get there, knees are bent, bring the feet to the mat. We're gonna uh, take a twist to end up here, right on time. So take a moment, press the feet into the earth, lift the hips and just shift them over to the left, just a teeny bit. And then once again, bend the knees into your chest. Drop the knees over to the right. Arms are in a T position where the elbows can be bent. And look left. All right, if the left shoulder isn't flat down on the mat, that doesn't always happen. That right hand can hang on to the outside of the left thigh if it wants. Again, just using, doing what you want to do to make this recline twist feel good in your body. Starting to release the breath. As we wind it. On your next inhale, bring the knees back center, bring the head back center, bring the feet to the mat, and make sure your hips come back in line just for a moment, and then we'll take the other side. So press the feet into the mat, shift the hips to the right a little bit, bend the knees into the chest, and then drop them over to the left, and head look. On your next inhale, bring everything back to center. Hug both knees into your chest and just a moment rock from side to side. A little massage in that low back area. And then roll all the way over onto one side. And use your hands to push yourself back up to a seated position. We're going to take our uh, final meditation. 
Well, remember that we can either stay in meditation for the rest of class, or you can lie back. I'll cue you into a traditional rest pose. So just take a moment to do what you need to do to get comfy in your sit. So if you want to bring back your, your cushion, bring it back. If you want to roll up the back of your mat and sit on the cushion, go for it. Now, the meditation we're going to practice this evening is one of my favorites. It's called the monkey mind meditation because it really quickly shows us how scattered and easily distracted our, our minds can be. So let's first take our sit. Pull the, rib, pull the hips out of the waist. No, pull the waist out of the hips. Pull the rib cage out of the waist. The gaze is straight ahead. Eyes are soft. Shoulders are loose. And the belly is full and easy. And just allow the body to breathe itself not controlling the breath in any way. Just easy in-breath, easy out-breath. And on each in-breath, think to yourself, rising. And on each out breath, we're going to start to count down from 100, one number per breath. So we think rising on the inhale, 100 on the exhale. Rising on the inhale, 99 on the exhale. And the catch with this one is that when we find our concentration drifts, either through sounds we hear, or sensations in the body, or thoughts in our mind, we're going to start the count over again. So when you feel your mind start to drift, bring it back to 100 on the exhale and continue counting down. Now I tell my students every time we do this meditation, I have some days where I'm just stuck on 100 and that's okay. That's the practice. The mind can drift a hundred times, bring it back to the breath 101 times. Rising in, counting down. Now, if you'd like to stay in this meditation, please do so. If you'd like to take a more traditional end to class this evening, with as little movement as possible, remove your cushion and lie all the way back down on your mat. And when you get there, let the toes fill out to the side. Snuggle the shoulder blades underneath you. And take a moment to move your head back and forth till you find that one position it wants to rest in. Relax the forehead. Relax the shoulders. 
Relax the toes. And just rest. No effort. Control the breath or the body. Just melt back into the mat and let the earth support you. I'll go quiet for a moment or two as we continue our monkey mind meditation or our Shavasana rest. You chose to stay in meditation, stay a moment longer. If you chose to lie back in a rest pose, start to bring movement back into the body, wiggle the fingers and the toes, circle the wrists and the ankles in one direction, and then the other. Stretch long, stretch toes and arms in opposite direction. And then roll over onto one side. And taking your time without rushing. Still keeping eyes gently closed. Use your hands to push you back to a seated position. When you get there, Everyone can bring hands, palms touching in front of the heart. Thank you all so much for practicing with me this evening. Bow the head, drop the hands, and gently blink the eyes open and come on back. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining me, everyone, this evening. I look forward to seeing you again in two weeks' time for another class. And again, if you would like to follow the latest yoga developments and get uh, access to all of our past classes, make sure to get with us on social media or head to our yoga site at cyflib.info slash yoga. All right. Thanks again, everybody. Stay well. We'll see you next time.